Is your debt causing you sleepless nights? Knock your debt out with Debt KO. And your debt won't be the only thing keeping you up at night. Debt KO, free impartial advice on all your debt. This is something that comes along every now and then in generation and it's special. This is Kugan Cassius for Eiffel TV in association with MTK Global. It's Joshua Pula Fight Week. Delighted to be joined by the King of Albania, Florian Marku. How are you, my friend? I'm very good, thank you. And you? Very well. You've, um, well, for the last 24 hours, been the focal point of uh, the boxing social media world. Uh, let's just talk about, obviously, your opponent, Fearon. Uh, he's unable to to fight this week so there was a search for an opponent um, it seems to be Jamie Stewart who will be your opponent this Saturday yes yes I saw him okay. so it looks like he opened a, a Twitter account to kind of put himself into the mix to fight you this week I believe that's to be the case and as we believe he's on his way here uh, to go through the procedure in order to fight so yeah have you seen much of him since you know this this will probably be your opponent Yes, I saw him last night uh, in one fight with this guy, Hennessy. I don't think he's something special. His record is two wins, no losses. But I, uh, it's not a problem for me. The, the talk last night was obviously between yourself and uh, Chris Congo, who put a tweet out to say that he was ready. Um, his interpretation of being ready was to take this fight at 150 pounds but you and your team were insistent that you weren't going to budge on, on moving above 147. Yes, I fight all, only uh, down of 147 or 147 because I want eight inches in every fight. This makes me dangerous. And uh, Chris Congo, if she, wanted, if she wanted this fight, she couldn't have it. Be she couldn't have it because she make a post in Twitter. She say, I'm ready, let's go. And when we tell him, OK, you have it, make your way, then let's fight Saturday. She pull out again, you know, I knew that she will not fight me, but no problem, we fight after, after January. So for you, that extra three pounds isn't specifically about the weight, it's about the size of the gloves? Both of them, and the weight and the gloves. I haven't been fighting, I have seven, seven fights, I fight only in this weight. It's not my way to go up at the moment. I have been working for the world weight. In an interview I did with uh, Chris Congo late last night, he said that he was viewing this fight as uh, a tick over fight, like a, a, say, a stepping stone, but that kind of fight, he wasn't looking at it any more than that. Uh, you mean that you think that an uh, easy fight? I'm not saying he's saying it was an easy fight. I'm saying that he was, when people refer to a tick over fight, it means it's, yeah, um, yeah I something he believes not to be that challenging. I think that's probably the right way of explaining yeah. The people, the people will uh, remember this interview and these things that uh, she said. And when she will be in the ring with me, you will all, all understand what I am about, you know, and what Chris Congo have said, you know. Chris Congo is not something different for me. When I will be in the ring with him, and hopefully he doesn't change his mind, you know, after January, after I finish, with the help of God, this Saturday, my, my fight, I fight, I have a fight closed with Eddie Hearn for January, and after this, we can fight uh, with Chris Congo, and then you will see what I'm about, and if I'm an easy fight or not. It seems to me that you, since you've joined with Sam Jones and, and mm -hmm. SJM Boxing, obviously now you're linked with Matchroom, linked up with Matchroom, but it seems that before that it was kind of your own fans in Albania, the ones that used to pack out your call. Everyone on kind of that small hall circuit knew about you and they would always obviously come to support you, but now that's transcending onto the big stage, the main stage. Yes, it's true. And this is my dream, you know, the people cannot understand. Everyone have the desire to go there and to win, but no one have my, my will and uh, this is my life, you know. The people will understand it when the big fights come and when uh, the, the fights come uh, became tougher for me, then I will show what heart I have and how much I want it because 
with these files you cannot show I can talk whatever I want right now you know the people you say because everyone talk but when the time comes to show what I'm about then you will understand and this will make the UK fans love me Florian what what in your opinion separates you from any other welterweight in the UK right now my power and my style. I'm not only orthodox. I'm a south boy. I can be out court. I can I can fight. I can box distance. I can box close fight. But the fans they haven't seen nothing of them because they see all, all only my aggressive style and coming forward, knocking people out. But when the fighters come a little bit better, of course I will change the things. I I change. But till now I have fight with on, one hand. Only my last fight I couldn't throw both of my hands. And now you will see a different Florian. I I. Improving. Every time I'm improving. Every fight you will see different things from me. I'm sure you would have spoken about it at some point in interviews, but what, what would you tell people exactly how you came into boxing, Florian? Yes, uh, I was a kickboxing fight. I had 110 fights. I had only four losses. I'm not a lucky guy that became famous from one day to another. I have given many fights. I have been the best guy in the kickboxing. I win four world titles in the kickboxing. After this, I stopped kickboxing because it was not any more famous and popular the public. And I, I, I start MMA. After I had 7-0 in MMA, I, became, I stopped it because I, have, I had operation. And I, I start boxing. I have only two years that I box. And I, it was not supposed to start boxing, but I had the offer for a fight for one good manager here in, in, in London. She said, come here, we will do everything. But she was a big liar, you know. <laughs> I came here, I took a house, uh, apartment, and everything was a lie. But thanks God, everything now is, and I live here, me and my family, and I'm happy, you know, that everything goes right, and I box, I start fighting. Now, I've been told, not just, well, you've never said this to me, but I've been told from Albanians where I live that, you, you know, you are one of the most famous sports stars in the country. How have you connected with the Albanian public in such a way where, I mean, anyone who's been to one of your fights, especially the ones where you've literally had filled out a whole, um, like a York Hall by yourself, we've seen footage uh, of that, but how, how has that happened? How has that connection happened with, with your Albanian people? Uh, I grew up in Greece. In Greece, we have many Albanians. They live many Albanians. I win for 10 years straight, the best guys that Greece had, you know, in a kickboxing. And back then, Albania was, we didn't have popular fighter, you know, in Greece. And this grew my fan base. After this, I go in uh, Europe, I win big fights with Serbian, Albania with Serbian, we have some uh, conflicts. They had, not me, but the countries, you know, and this make me very, very fast popular in, uh, in Albania. And the fans go crazy because they know me. When I go in there, I give my heart. It's... Um it's very it's interesting seeing if people haven't seen it. I mean, if you go onto YouTube, you can see that that footage. Mr. Kubrat Pulev. Doing all right. Um, yeah, people can go onto YouTube and actually see that footage themselves if they haven't been to one of your fights. So when fans do come back eventually uh, in the masses, then we're really going to see that. Exactly. Trust me, next year, next year, I, I will be the favorite boy of uh, Eddie Helm. Remember that, you know. I know what I'm talking, I know what I'm doing, and you will see all. Florian, I do want to obviously ask you about, well, it's been running on for a few months now. It's kind of a, a social media assault on uh, Mr. Connor Ben, who fought recently against uh, Sebastian Formella. It's something that you want. It's, it seems like as reluctant as Connor Ben is to really, he doesn't really want to talk about you when, when he's asked, but it seems like maybe fan pressure might turn that fight into a big fight. Yes, me too. I don't want anymore to talk about him because every interview I give, they, they ask me about, about, about him. I don't care when the, when the time comes, this fight to happen, it will be massive and I will knock him out. That's for sure. But till then, I have other fights to, that we are planning on because he doesn't want to fight me. I don't care. When the time comes, we will discuss again about him. That's the problem, though, in this, in this country. When you mention one fighter, until that fight has happened, you're always going to be asked questions. And unfortunately, like I said, for Conor Ben, it's going to be exactly the same. You both are going to get questions about, you know, what about Florian Marco? What about Conor Ben? Until the fight happens, this is how it is here. So, Till, till uh, I fight Conor Ben, I will beat all the prospects that they have in, here in UK. 
we start this Saturday. We start in January. We announce uh, my next fight. After this, we fight this guy, Chris Congo. And after this, whoever is next prospect, I will fight him also. And then we go to Conor Ben if she wants this fight. If not, no problem. We go outside of, of the UK. It's not my dream to fight Conor Ben. Conor Ben is still is one number for me, one fight that I will beat him and I will put on my record, nothing more. Seems like 2021 is going to be very busy for you. Very, very busy, very busy. And can't wait for that. Is that the first time you've met Eddie Hearn today, Florian? First time. Happy to meet him, you know. To tell you the truth, this is my dreams come true, you know. This is what I'm, I have been working and now it's time to show what I'm about, you know. I must, I must perform how I talk and I'm going to do this this Saturday. We look forward to it. Uh, Florian, have you got anything you want to say or you want to tell your even Albanian fans in Albanian if you want to tell them if they're watching us? Of course. I want to say, first of all, all my Albanian fans, thank you for, for, for the support. Everyone see and uh, love our, 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 our supporters. I will, I will make them all proud. And also to the UK fans, you know, who they support me. I take many messages. I have new fans. Thank you all. You will see big fights from me. Can you teach me one bit of Albanian before we go? One? One bit of Albanian. You want to... Yeah, you teach, teach me one, one yes. thing. Say... Uh, Shiptar. Albanian. Shiptar. Yes. Albania. What does that mean? It's Albanian in, in, in our language. Okay. Yes. Shiptar. Yes. Yes. Every interview you teach me a little bit more and then okay. we, we can do an interview in Albanian one day. Thank you. See you. Thank you very much, Florian Marco. This is something that comes along every now and then in generation and it's special. Is your debt causing you sleepless nights? Knock your debt out with Debt KO. And your debt won't be the only thing keeping you up at night. Debt KO, free, impartial advice on all your debt.